So finally, let's summarize some of our results. So we started off with the complex quaternions acting on themselves. And we, we found that this gave all of the Lorentz representations of the standard model. Then we were able to copy what we did in the case of left and right handed vial spinners. And we were able to generalize that to build SU and SD using just the complex octonions acting on themselves. Next, we noted that in order to go between left and right-handed vial spinners, all we needed was the complex conjugate. And similarly, in the case of SU and SD, all we need again is the complex conjugate. For example, if I were to take the basis vector given by this, This corresponds to the positron. And if I were to take the complex conjugate of this, it would give me this basis vector, which corresponds to the basis vector of the uh, electron. So in other words, in this formalism, in order to go to be between particle and antiparticle, all we need is the complex conjugate. Next, in the case of the complex octonions, uh, we introduce these ladder operators, lowering operators and raising operators. And these operators had a U3 symmetry, which rotated lowering operators into lowering operators and raising operators into raising operators. This U3 symmetry is given by SU3 cross U1 over Z3. Which we later identified as SU3 color and electromagnetic U1. So in other words, we have a direct route to the two unbroken gauge symmetries of the standard model. Next, in the case of SU3, We found that the transformations on these ladder operators induce transformations on SU and SD, our two minimal left ideals. And we found that SU under SU3 broke down as a singlet, an anti-triplet, a triplet, and a singlet. And SD broke down like this. So these are exactly the SU3 representations that you would expect for one full generation of quarks and leptons. And finally, we were able to introduce a new electric charge operator, Q. So this Q gave us uh, the correct charges we would expect for one generation. So in other words, zero plus or minus one third, plus or minus two thirds, and plus or minus one. But not only did it give us the correct charges, those charges fit in perfectly with the SU3 representations. So there was no reason to expect these electric charges to fit in with the SU3 representations, but they did.
And finally, we were able to uh, define our electric charge operator, Q, as the number operator divided by 3. This offers us a straightforward explanation as to why electric charge is quantized. That is, electric charge is quantized because number operators can only take on integer values.